Greetings, uh, welcome to this week's devotional. Um, this week, I'll actually be using a resource that was put together by the ELCA. Um, it's an abbreviated morning prayer devotional, um, and you can find it online uh, on the ELCA website. Also, I'm hopeful that uh, we can link it uh, in some way to this video so you have access uh, to go along uh, and, and actually join me in this. It's um, meant to be a call and response. However, you can do it by yourself. Um, and so I'll be reading both uh, the pieces, which are the call and then also the response. So if you'd like to go ahead and pause the video, um, take a second and look for the resource. Once again, it's, a, it's, a, it's morning prayer. Um, I believe it can be found on the COVID-19 response page of the ELCA. Um, and like I said, hopefully it's, it's linked to this, um, to, to this video as well. So go ahead, put yourself on pause, um, and you can open the, the devotion um, and join me in it. Welcome back. I hope you were able to find uh, the devotion. Um, and so I'll go ahead and start us. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Hallelujah. The psalm will be Psalm 95, 1 through 7a. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours for you made it and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture, and the sheep of God's hands. The other reading that I'll use for today is from Acts 1, 1 through 11. And this is actually comes from our daily lectionary. It's the readings for today. The Ascension of our Lord is celebrated today. And so Acts 1, 1 through 11. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions to the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he, present, he presented himself alive by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying there, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In this time of devotion uh, is marked a, a space for reflection. Um, a few of the pieces that I'm reflecting on uh, as I read the reading from Acts um, is what does it mean to be the disciples during this time? Uh, a time when uh, uh, kind of this, this, this 40 days of Jesus being present with them after Easter, some of the stories of, that we've heard over the last uh, a few weeks. I'm actually going to close my window here. It's a little loud. Uh, a few of the stories that we've heard over the last few weeks, stories of faith, um, and, and we are brought to a time when now the disciples are without Jesus, um, and we are waiting Pentecost, this time of the ascension of the Lord, this week 
uh, where where the disciples are without um, uh, Jesus's presence, where they haven't yet received the Holy Spirit uh, in, in the, the story of Luke and Acts. And so during this time, uh, what does it mean to feel kind of alone, uh, right? How can we resonate with that? Uh, Jesus's presence might feel very, very far away from us. The Holy Spirit's presence might be very might feel very far away from us as well during this time. And so uh, I wonder uh, how might the disciples' experience resonate with our own right now? Um, we might, during the time of Lent, have, have felt kind of Jesus, uh, these stories of faith leading us towards something, um, uh, kind of a, a time of sadness to gladness, as Pastor Johnson has been using with the children. Um, through that time of Lent, and then we get to Easter, and it's such joy, and we're with Jesus again, and we're listening to Jesus and all of the wonderful um, pieces and assurances that he gives us during this time. Um, and then we reach this time, and, and uh, the disciples are asking, where's Jesus? Where's the Holy Spirit? What do we do with this? Um, and so how can this time right now uh, that we're living in in COVID-19, um, uh, how might we be in the similar place? Where is Jesus? Uh, where is the Holy Spirit? So those are just kind of a few of the things that we're reflecting upon uh, during this time, and and uh, and also the 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 knowledge that uh, Jesus is present, the Holy Spirit is present now, um, even though we might feel uh, some distance. And so once again, continuing with this theme of, of where might we find Jesus in the unexpected? Where are we finding the Holy Spirit in the unexpected? How are we preparing ourselves for Pentecost um, uh, next week and, and um, after the ascension of our Lord? Um, and, and I invite you to kind of pause the video now, reflect on that, but also any other reflections that you have, either from the psalmody or from, from Acts. Um, this is a wonderful practice in the midst of this liturgy um, to take some time and really dig into it for yourself. So I encourage you to pause the video and come back and we'll continue with the Gospel Canticle. Welcome back. The Gospel Canticle is the Song of Zechariah. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Now we'll enter into a time of prayer. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness. For the gifts of relationship with others. For the communion of faith in your church. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world. Heal the hurts of all your children. And bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. For the people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare. For all those who work for peace and international harmony. For all those who strive to save the world from carelessness and destruction. For the church of Jesus Christ in every land. 
Almighty and merciful God, everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin or be overcome in adversity. In all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I ask you to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now the blessing. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me this morning in morning prayer. Um, once again, this is a great resource that you yourself can, can use um, to start off your day. Uh, there's a morning prayer, there's an evening prayer, and I believe a midday prayer as well. So uh, definitely use these resources to enter in more deeply into your spiritual life, to provide a little bit of ritual around um, your, your reading and reflecting on the Bible on a daily basis. I hope you again join me for next week. Uh, we'll, we'll be back and, and continue with our devotion series. Thank you so very much.